Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture series on uh, options trading. So in this series, we are covering the basics of options. In the first lecture, we talked about uh, uh, what is call option, what is put option, when do we buy or sell each of them. In the second lecture, we talked about the debit spreads and now in this third lecture, we want to discuss the credit spreads. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, we want to understand when do we use this strategy. So we use credit spreads whenever we have a directional view or we feel that the price is going to not go beyond the level. So for example, if I'm very sure that uh, uh, I feel that it's bullish, but I feel it is not going to fall much. Then I can do a put credit spread, right? Uh, similarly, if I feel that there's a strong resistance and it's not going to break that, then I can do a call credit spread. So we're going to discuss more about how we create these spreads. But for now, you need to understand that credit spreads are basically created when we are very, very sure or our view is that the price is not going to go to that particular uh, price point. All right. Uh, it's okay if the momentum is low or if it's not there. The strategy will work even if uh, the markets do not move much or uh, maybe it moves slightly in your direction. So both ways it will work. Unlike uh, debit spread. So in debit spread, we really needed momentum. So it's the opposite here. Here if the momentum is not there, that's also fine. So generally this is good uh, when uh, less time is uh, left for the expiry because this strategy is dependent on the time decay. And you know that the time decay is intensified as you move closer to the expiry. So the closer we are to the expiry, the better the credit spread will give results. I mean, we'll get fa faster results in that case. Uh, capital required, the margins required are similar to debit spreads, uh, slightly higher. Uh, so uh, this also, as it's a spread, we are buying a strike and then we are selling a strike, right? So we, we get the margin benefit here. We'll discuss more about margins uh, uh, as we move along. Okay. So this is the chart of Bank Nifty uh, and we'll see how we can create a credit spread. Uh, we'll take an example. So in this chart, you can see the movement is bullish and uh, uh, the Bank Nifty is trading around 42,400, right? And uh, now there are multiple options. I mean, you can create a position uh, through various uh, techniques. You could go long futures, you could uh, buy Bank Bs, which is an ETF, you could do a debit spread. But in this case, let's see if our view is that the market has run up a lot and now it might or may or may not uh, move as fast upwards. So what we want to do is uh, we say that since there is the trend is upwards, the market is definitely not going to fall below 40 to 200. So this level, right? So this is, let's say this is our level where we feel it is not going to go below, right? So what, how we create credit spread in this case. So first we'll buy uh, a lower strike, right? Which is 42,000 put and then we'll sell a higher strike that is 42,200 put. Right uh, now, it's very important to understand why we are buying first. Because uh, if we buy, if we sell first, then selling will require a margin of close to 1.4 lakhs. Right, and uh, sometimes uh, we may or may not have that much margin. So it's always advisable to buy, uh, go in with the buy leg first, and then when we go ahead and uh, sell this uh, 42 to 200 put, the margin charge is only around 25k. Right. So always remember while creating, and this is true for both uh, debit and credit spreads. Always we go ahead with the buy leg first and then with the sell leg. All right. So let me also uh, like uh, take an example in terms of the margin. So uh, so uh, if we are only selling, then uh, we are going to pay 1.4 lakhs. And if you are doing the spread, we are going to pay around 25,000. So there's a very decent uh, dip in the margins, right? And that is why this strategy is very popular because the margin required is very less. So, uh, so this is, these are the premiums for these strikes and uh, now let's look at some of the basic metrics. So first let's look at the spread. So the spread clearly is uh, 200 points, right, which is the difference between the strikes. And then we look at the net credit, which is 60, which is the difference between the premium. So uh, why this is a net credit? Because when we're selling something, we're getting that uh, credit. So we're getting 237 points of premium. And when we are buying, right, so we are paying that out of our pocket. So that is why we are getting a credit of 60. So if you remember in the debit spread, uh, this number was negative. So it was a debit spread. So we were buying uh, at a higher premium and selling at a low. This is the opposite in this case, right? Uh, what is the max loss? Max loss is the spread minus the net credit. So in this case, for a profit of 60 points, uh, the max loss that is possible is 140. But this is one of the drawbacks or you can say uh, you know, shortcoming of this strategy wherein uh, the reward to risk is not favorable, right? So for any strategy, there are two elements that we look at. First element is the success percentage or how many times uh, out of, let's say we are taking 100 trends out of that, how many times uh, it gives us a profit? That is the success percentage. The second thing that we look at is reward to risk. 
So in case of a let's do a comparison between debit spread and credit spread. So in case of debit spread, the success percentage is low. In case of credit spread, the success percentage is high. Typically, from my experience, in a debit spread, you'll get a success percentage of around 35%. In a credit spread, you'll get around 70 to 75%. In case of a debit spread, the reward to risk is very nice, very high. And in case of a credit spread, it is uh, on the lower side. So we can see for a reward of 60 points, we are taking a risk of 140 points. All right. Uh, max profit is going to be 60. Break even will happen. Uh, uh, the formula for that is leg 2 minus net credit. So 42140, somewhere around here, right? If market does not go below this, we'll be flat or positive. So this is 42140. So if it stays above 42200, we'll get max profit, that is 60 points. If it starts to go below this point, we'll start incurring loss, and max loss will happen at this level, which is 42,000. Right, so all of this can be uh, looked at very nicely on the chart. Right, before that, let's look at the reward to risk. So as we said, 60 is to 140. So reward to risk of 1 is to 2.3. So let's look at the payoff chart now. Uh, we are plotting all the uh, strikes here and also the break even. So this is what uh, the payoff chart will look like. So the max profit is going to be, if you are taking this in, on one lot, it's going to be 1500. Right. 60 is the max profit uh, multiplied by the number of, uh, I mean, one lot is the quantity is 25. This is the max profit. This is the max loss. So 140 is the max. So this is uh, beyond 40 to 200, as we said, above this. Uh, sorry. So above this is all profit. Below this is all loss. So max loss, basically. And this is our break even. So this is 42. 140. Right. So at this, uh, so this is what the payoff will look like. So this is 42, 140. All right, guys. Uh, so this is all about the credit spreads. Uh, in our le next lecture, we'll pick up some another interesting topic. Hope you like this crisp, uh, short and crisp uh, lecture on the credit spreads. Uh, do let us know. Uh, do share your feedback. Thank you.